Are you looking for a church where love flows because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to...
Amen. On last night, our bishop spoke to us in a very powerful way. And brothers and sisters, with everything that's going on in our country, we need leadership. We need spiritual leadership. The Bible says that my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I want you to ask someone, do we have a leader? Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Ask them again. Do we have a leader? Now, this is what I want you to tell them. Yes, we have a leader. Come on. Yes, we have a leader. Brothers and sisters of the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction, I present to you the prelate of this jurisdiction, the leader of the times. Come on, let's hear it for Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson, Jr. Come on, come on, put those hands together. Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson, Jr. Bishop Frank
Kiev and here in Spain, yes, Lord. Can you feel him over here? If you feel him over there, holler glory. What about the choir? Can you feel him? Say mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Can the missionaries and the preachers? Yes, sir. Can y'all feel it? Yes. If you feel it, say yes. yes. Oh my God. Now, if you remember what I told you to say in the different section. I want everybody to thunder out what your section, your section, and your section was supposed to say. Come on, come on. And you know what? He heard every one of them. I know it sounded kind of like that, but he was able, praise the Lord, to divide and hear every sound and every voice. And I love him. God bless you. You all are moving along real good. We thank God for the men of the church. All of our believers. Amen. The three bishops that we have. Well, that's if they would stand out. Amen. Bishop Rudolph, Bishop Strickland, and Bishop Reed. Come on, give them a hand. Assistant, would you stand? Second administrative assistant had to go out and get his granddaughter to be involved. I don't know if she's made it here yet. Have anybody heard? She's not here yet? Oh, okay. All right. They normally do that. <laughs> All of our administrative assistants, would you stand? Let all the superintendents, would you stay? <laughs> all of our state officials, would you stay? <laughs> all the pastors, would you stay? superintendent, uh, you're just a brother. Stand. Amen. Amen. Now for that mother's see, I want all of the men to stand together. Amen. We are here. We are here. Amen. I want the brother to shout out, God bless you, Mother Watkins. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. What a blessing it is. Amen. Say amen for Lady Anderson. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Uh, since you all are moving, I'm not going to stand up here and take up a whole lot of time. I'm going to do what I'm assigned to do tonight. Give remarks and receive the ministry of giving. I've given the remarks. <laughs> and now let us turn our minds toward giving. <laughs> Mother, Watkins, Mother Watkins, as long as I've known her and her husband, late husband, they were givers. They were givers. And since she moved into this spot, being the supervisor, the women department of the second jurisdiction of Arkansas, she had to move to another level in her giving. And one of the things, if you check the records, if you check the records, the state, the jurisdiction, the districts, the national you will find her name all over the place. Amen. If CSI was investigating her, they would say guilty 
on all accounts. She does that. So tonight is our opportunity to sow into her ministry. Amen. And I've noticed every district that I've been to, and I went to all of the district leaders, and even though she was not able to be there because sometimes we had two or three going on at the same time, but her name was called. Her name was called, and we thank God for that. So we come tonight as leaders. We come tonight as leaders to say to her mother, we appreciate you for the job that you're doing. And I appreciate the women. I appreciate you that are working with the Watkins. And uh, don't give her no trouble. Don't give her no trouble. Amen. If you follow her, uh, you, you'll be all right. All the missionaries that was the last of the day, thank God you all got a charge on today. God bless you. God bless Missionary Slater who did a fantastic job. Amen. If you all don't do it, you, you heard how to do it. Amen. God bless you. I am excited. Amen. Because the Lord is mighty with me. Yes. And the other part going, everybody wants to know how you feel. I appreciate any call. But I sure was glad that I feel like being here. Yeah. Some of y'all much, much younger than I am. And you complain more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and this part of the church, this is extended from the office. Mother, it's some kind of mother. Yeah. Yeah. And tonight, we are going to show her how much we love her. What we call love yeah. and thank you. We were so happy. At this time, oh, we are ready now. Where is Sister Helen McKinney? She, she is going to sing for us.
This great woman of God has inner confidence, wrapped in humility, and accepted with natural class. Because of her intellectual and irreproachable moral character and singular leadership abilities, oh, good God. <laughs> Jesus as he hung on the cross. They pierced him in the south. Blood and water pushed out. Just hit me one time. <laughs>
verse 13 and 14. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will their sin and will heal their land. From Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray without ceasing. And Jesus said, man ought always pray and not faint. Mark 9, 29. And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Finally, James 5, 16. The effectual, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Great God, awesome God, mighty God, sovereign God, who yet and yet great. Hey, glory to God. Mighty God. King of kings. Lord of lords. There's none like you. You're the only living and true God. We magnify you and we glorify you. God, we honor you and we adore you. We lift you up. We honor you, God. We magnify your holy name because you are worthy. We thank you, Father God, for loving us. We thank you, Father God, for the privilege of prayer. We thank you, Father, for your precious son, Jesus, who died on the cross for us who shed his blood that we might be able to be cleansed of all of our sins, hallelujah, to be atoned and justified so that we too might inherit eternal life. Father God, we thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Your spirit, God, who yet reigns in the earth, who lives within us, who is our teacher, our comforter, and our guide. And God, in the name of Jesus, we just bless your name tonight and thank you for the privilege of standing before your great people. Father, my body is weak, but I know that you will give me the strength. And I ask you now, God, to touch me in the name of Jesus. And let your word Tonight. In the name of Jesus, we praise you now for your people, Father God. We pray that they will be blessed by the word. In the name of Jesus, they will be touched. In the name of Jesus, have your way in this place as you have all week. Be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you, Father God, as we decrease. We 
pray that you will increase. In the name of Jesus, we give you the honor. We give you the praise. Thank God. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I want to start off by saying, y'all messed me up tonight. <laughs> Y'all messed me up tonight because I was not aware of what you all were up to. All I knew is I needed to go to the ladies' room. So I went. But I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely appreciate every one of you for what you have done I thank you for your support of this meeting this year. Our first time coming back together in this place. And it has been glorious. And we thank God. I want to give honor tonight to God, who's the head of my life. And I thank God that not only is he the head of my life, he is my life. For truly it is in him that I live, I move, and I have my being. I thank God tonight for our leader blessing me and giving me this opportunity to serve. He could have chosen anyone, but I thank God for this opportunity. God bless you, Bishop Anderson, and thank you, Mother Anderson, for your love and support. God bless you. I want to thank God tonight. I know the house has been addressed, and I'm not going to go through the whole roll call, but I have to say that I thank God for all of these great men of God, these bishops tonight. I thank God for... All of these men of God, the administrative assistants and superintendents and all of the pastors and jurisdictional officials and all of these elders and ministers and all of our lay brothers, I thank God for you men. You know, I don't just say this to be saying this, but I thank God when men show up. I thank God for the men because they are our covenant. I respect you and I thank you. And I want to honor and thank God for all of these beautiful women of God. Amen. Mother Haley, you did, you know what? I, I was like, what? Every time you get up, you make me want to just Sing down because I'm like, uh oh, people gonna be expecting something for real. <laughs> Mother Haley, thank you. I love you, and I know you love me. I honor and thank God for all of the administrative facilitators. They are like my assistant supervisors. You know, we don't um, have a lot of assistant supervisors anymore. Uh, they're asking us not to do that, but. I thank God for these women of God, and I thank God for our area rep as well. I thank God for all uh, of these district missionaries and Supervisor Robinson, District Missionary, New Day District, God bless you. Our designated national evangelist, Evangelist Scott. jurisdictional workers, all of these women that work so hard to support the women's department ministry. I honor you. I honor all of these pastors, wives, superintendents, wives, praise God, administrative assistants. I, I said it wasn't going down the line, but I want to give honor to every one of you that are present and those of you that are viewing online. We honor you as well. I thank God for you tonight. Okay, I, I think I probably need to move hurriedly so that I don't give out. Amen. You know, there's a song. If I could sing, I would have sung. I'll say.
say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Praise God from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely yes. Completely yes. My soul. I said my soul. I don't know about you, but my soul says yes. I know you can say yes to the Lord. I know you can say yes to the Lord. This is a good time to do your yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's an old song the saints used to sing. I don't think there's a lot of these old songs I don't hear a lot anymore. But oh, sweet one. Oh, sweet one. Jesus. The Son of God. Oh, sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus, the Son of God. And then they would sing this song. I need the
God for my daughter, all of my daughters, praise God. You know, I have many. I had one biological, but I have many daughters. And I thank God for every one of my daughters, my uh, son in love, my son, praise God, my daughter in love, my grandchildren, my granddaughter, and my great grandchildren. Yes. They call me G Nanny. Not Nana. G Nanny. You get it? Nanny? Okay. It's all right. But I thank God for them. But I just want to say how much I'm going to say this right now before I get into my message. I thank God for Missionary Rainey. And the program committee members for the wonderful. Dean Moore and the workshop and the information you shared, Bishop Rudolph, and there are people that want that phone number again if you share it at the end of the service. I thank God for your service and I certainly thank God for all of my administrative staff. Amen. I praise God. I don't take anybody for granted, but I thank God for you. So now may I just begin to Try to share a little bit. I'm not going to share all of this, but can I share a little bit? Yeah. All right. Now, this is what's been resonating in my spirit. All Jump right. to another phase of me. As I was praying and listening to the various prayers on the prayer lines, and I would love for you all to just visit the prayer line sometime, but please, 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 if you come on and you're not designated to lead the prayer, please mute your phones. Please let us reference it, reference the line. But I tell you, God has been doing some awesome things in the prayer line. I don't stand here and just say words to be saying words. I want you to know that people have been truly healed as a result of the prayer. that have been bound by demonic spirits have been delivered. I want you to know people that had suicidal ideations yes. and other mental illnesses have been delivered. I want you to know people that have had various conditions in their bodies have been healed. And the praise reports have come in to let us know. So we started making a notation that we needed to know who called in yes. with the prayer. and the date their prayer was answered. I'm telling you, thanks to God, it's power in prayer. But you know what's greater than that? That I was praying individually, Missionary Johnson, you know what's greater than that? Corporate prayer. When we united. When we're united and when we're fasting and praying together, oh, don't tell me what God going to do. He said, if my people, I don't know, you know, how you identify yourself. Did I give honor to you, Mother Robbins? Yes, I did. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So this one thing I know is that our world, our nation, our society, our school, our communities, our families, and yes, even our churches are in trouble. Yeah? For real, just be honest. We have turned away from the standards that were set forth by our great God. His standard for us continues to be holy. Our world leaders, our national supreme court, the legislative and executive branches of government, our state and local government leaders, our financial leaders, our educators and the power brokers and many other religious leaders have encouraged, they have embraced, they have accepted, and they have permitted the pervasive sins that have overtaken our world today. The evil, demonic spirits of deception. The spirit of division. The spirit of destruction. The spirit of disorder, opposing and undermining 
and then usurping the authority of our nation's leaders. You see everything that's happening in Washington. Every play, everything that's trying to be put forth. Another group says, no, nah, we're going to block it. It ain't going to happen. We don't care what you say. Ain't going to happen because we're going to stop it. Guess what? That same spirit has crept into the church. All right. I'm here to There is this pervasive idea among unbelievers that the church doesn't have anything to offer them. Now, one of the problems that the church is encountering is the result of us allowing ourselves to just blend in and you don't see a difference. You don't know us from anybody else. later today when she said this brother people didn't even know he was a member of any Baptist church and he was a leader okay but sons of God let me say this we and I say we because all of us bear responsibility we have failed God as his ambassador y'all might not like me after this but that's okay let me out there and get out here fast and take this thing off and put my clothes on and go find some food <laughs> but it's okay y'all might not like me but if one thing is for sure I will say what God told me to say we are not listening to the Holy Ghost when he speaks and therefore we are allowing ourselves to be deceived we're trying so hard to be accepted that we are now teaching and preaching tolerance above holiness. And to God, we are guilty of teaching acceptance rather than righteousness. We're promoting lukewarmness rather than having a red hot passion for Christ. And many people now are rejecting the teaching of holiness.
I love you. And therefore, I will tell you the truth. The truth is, we need to be revived. First, people sometimes try to make you feel shame when you have to deliver a message like this and say, where, where it came from first. Amen. 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 I'm serious about man. We are no longer passionate right. about teaching and preaching the unadulterated truth that we must be holy. But the message of sanctification and holiness shall never grow old. Never. Saints of God, our ministries are operating as though business as usual. And guess what? As a result of that, they are losing their relevance. We got to get back on track. We have got to realize how important it is not to water down God's word. Not to be accepted of any and everything. Because it seems like the mega churches are growing. If you do this, if you do it like that, we're going to copy out for that. No, we are an original church. That we've got to stand united. We've got to stand united through repentance, first of all. Then we've got to stand united as we go forth in fasting and prayer and in our faith in the Word of God. God is requiring nothing less than a rededication and a recommitment of his people to live a life of holiness. We can only fulfill these requirements through, first of all, repenting, fasting and prayer, and faith in the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our children, our youth, our college and career, our singles, our married couples, our widows, and our golden age people of today yes. are crying out for you. Yes. They need to be revived and encouraged. Praise yes. God. Yes. We can't forget about them. That's why it was so important. God just put a burden in me. We got to highlight, spotlight, invest in our children and our history age, our youth and our college and career age group. Y'all, we cannot go, go on the Jeep, go on all the way, and leave them behind. Yeah. They can do more than sing. Yeah. 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 We've got to tap in to their talents and their abilities, the gifts that God has given them, and help to develop them. I was just so impressed with little brother Javante Harris. He um, carries himself like a little preacher. Yeah. <laughs> and his twin brother is like, I said, is that your adjective? <laughs> he said, that's my brother. I said, is he your adjective? Right. He said, no ma'am. I said, he should be. He should be right there beside you, covering you and helping you. But I just love it when I see young people love God. God, it's up to us to make sure that we are on our clarion call to reach as many souls as possible because Satan is busy waging war. Amen. He's trying to win, but we know that he is already defeated by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Prayer, fasting, and faith in the Word of God are essential if we are to maintain this victory that has already been won. I am 
invite you to unite with us with the jurisdictional intercessory prayer ministry and spend some extra time communing with God. This ministry is open to both male and female. I'm telling you, young and more too. <laughs> and we're continuing to pray and seek the face of our great God. Praise God. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 30, the scripture says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But, now this is sad. I found none. Saints of God, a lot of people think being a prayer warrior and intercessor, and I call them gap standers in the second jurisdiction, they think that that's just a special ministry. And yes, there are certain people who are willing to sacrifice and give of themselves in fasting and prayer to pray for the needs of others as though they were praying for themselves. But they're not praying for themselves, they're praying for others. Praise God. So, intercession is the act of intervening and mediating between two opposing parties. The act of standing between heaven and earth. Standing between the church and the world. Standing between fathers and mothers. Standing between boys and girls. Standing between sons and daughters and nations. It is the kind of intervention that holds back judgment. <laughs> intercession is an act and intercessors are not pretenders, but they spend time in fasting and prayer seeking God for the needs of others. Yes. Praise God. Intercession happens to be the highest level of prayer. Jesus is our intercessor and he is constantly in the kingdom of Jesus. Second Chronicles 7 14 reminded us that intercessors are God's people. God's people who are called by his name. Those who are willing to humble themselves, who are willing to pray and seek God's face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If there ever was a nation that needed healing, it is the one in which we live. This passage of scripture contains a hard truth that many Christians do not want to acknowledge. While to say that in order for our land to be healed, America has to repent right. and turn from their wicked ways. But that's not what the passage says. The passage says it isn't the nation that's failing to follow the instructions. It's God's people. Matthew 5, 13 and 14 declares that we are to be bearers of righteousness. We are to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Yet we have lost our saltiness. In the name of political correctness, tolerance, and diversity, we backed away from telling the truth. We have become diluted by our culture and becoming more like the world trying to fit in. But saints of God, as our nation continues to go deeper into immorality and wickedness, the body of Christ seems to have very little influence over it. But you know what the truth of the matter is? 
it is possible to heal our man. All right. The answer is found with us, the people of God.